What's up, guys? I'm Osmic, something something DOA lore and trivia. While I'm working on the next trivia episode focusing on Elliot, I decided to do another quick commentary response to a video from another DOA content creator, Colin Lack. A relatively new channel as far as uploading goes, he had my attention with this podcast video. The Dead or Alive reboot has reignited my love of fighting games. It was relatable and inspiring, but that's not going to be the focus of this video, at least not yet. What I will be focusing on is Colin's follow-up video, which is building the roster for the Daryl Live reboot. Given the length of this video, and the fact that most of these additions are painfully obvious and I agree with them, we won't be going over the video in full. Instead, I'll be addressing the more ambitious parts of this video, such as the guest characters, and point out some misinformation regarding certain returning characters, and explain further context behind their roster additions. Colin Lack's contact info will be linked in the description, as well as the end of this video, and I strongly encourage you to support his channel. Tina is another fan favorite since basically day one, and her inclusion has to be put here if we're including Mila. She is basically Mila's whole motivation for entering the Dead or Alive tournament. Mila's other motivation is to meet her hero Bass Armstrong. Bass doesn't necessarily have to be added to the roster, but Tina should be, as it gives the roster a dedicated grappler. Regarding Bass, I have to disagree, especially if this is a reboot. Regardless of how you feel about him, and grapplers in general based on what I've watched, Bass is a necessary character addition, as he was the one who pushed Tina into joining the first Daryl tournament to begin with, and by extension, boost her reputation in her wrestling career. Tina, however, wanted to use that as an opportunity to escape his father's stranglehold over her career pursuits, and they'd been feuding with each other up until the fifth Daryl tournament, where they finally reconciled. And even with that story arc behind him, Bass still has a connection to Rig, a major catalyst in the main story connected to Victor Diamond's faction, Mist. If you're still not convinced, there's a whole video I made about him in the Dare Live Lord Swain series. Give it a watch sometime. Since we're on the Ninja Gaiden characters right now, this is the perfect place to slot in Momiji, a fan favorite character who has never been on the base roster of a Dead or Alive game. Momiji has been the base roster of not one, but two Dead or Alive fighting games, Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate and Dead or Alive 5 Last Week, both of which were major updates of the original Dead or Alive 5 and required a separate purchase, physical or digital. Now granted, you can make the argument that Momiji was not in the base roster of Dare Alive 5's original vanilla release, but it doesn't change the fact that she was in the base roster for free in the following two iterations after that, until she somehow ended up being a true separate DLC purchase in Dare Alive 6, which I gotta admit, the reason behind it was... stupid. Honoka also heavily suits beginner players as well as advanced ones. She has a low floor, high ceiling for gameplay. Also, since it's a reboot, she could become the main character. Honoka being a main character in the Dare Life reboot is as possible as Mocap being the main character of Mortal Kombat. Given the overall context of the story, it just wouldn't work. She would have a better chance of being the main protagonist if it were a sequel to Dare Life 6. To be honest, I've never been interested in Marie Rose. Her fighting style doesn't do it for me, and I'm not into lolly characters. So she's here simply because she's popular and will sell the game, and because she's often linked with Honoka story-wise and gameplay-wise, if you've played the Extreme series of games. I'd argue that Marie Rose also has connections to Nico, given some unused voice clips data mine from the Steam version of Dare Life 6, and the lack of her reacting to Marie Rose's presence is so subtle that if you blink, you'll miss it. But unless the reboot involves Nico creating a time machine to send herself two years back in time, we'll probably never know. Lena's half-sister Kokoro is one of my waifus in this series. I love that she's cute and sweet, but I also love her mix-up potential and her damage output. To be honest, I debated on putting Kokoro on the DLC portion of the roster, mainly because she hasn't been a major player in terms of storylines. Ooh, that's bad. However, she isn't enough of a fan favorite to sell the season pass, so she makes the main roster just because she doesn't fit into the DLC mold. That's good! However, I would consider dropping her from the roster at least for the first game in the reboot continuity. That's bad. Kokoro is suited for beginners and intermediate players alike, and thus adds some much needed balance to the floor end of this game's roster. That's good! Oh, thank god. You almost gave me a heart attack. I don't know if you played it, Colin, but Dead Alive Dimensions for the Nintendo 3DS, excellent game by the way, was a retcon of the first four Dead Alive games weaved into a five-part cinematic story with static images a la Bayonetta 1. Kokoro was not only in the base roster, but even appeared as early as the Dare Life 3 chapter, when she didn't even make her debut until Dead or Alive 4. And to further prove my point, Christy made an appearance in this retcon story as early as the Dare Life 1 chapter, when she didn't officially make an appearance until Dead or Alive 3. That being said, there's no reason Kokoro should not be in the base roster at this point for the reboot. 
Fang makes the roster because she's basically one of the few defensive specialists in the Dead or Alive series. She's effectively the only turtle in the series, for a matter of fact. For those of you that don't know, turtles is a term in fighting games for a character that sits back and lets the fight come to them. Turtling is not exclusive to any one character type. You can say this about every character if you know how to throw or strike punish unsafe strings from aggressive opponents well enough. Anyone can be a turtle. In truth, Lei Feng is a well-rounded character who can be played offensively, just as well as defensively, by baiting an opponent to strike right into a sabaki or a parry after she finished a string that the opponent was blocking. It requires some thinking outside the box and player knowledge, but Lei Feng is definitely not intended to be played only for turtling. Zack has long been Dead or Alive's joke character. He's basically DOA's Dan Hibiki. It's too bad Koei Tecmo and Team Ninja don't take Zack more seriously because he actually has the potential to be a really fun fighter. Not just a funny fighter. Give Zack a few more tools and he becomes a competent fighter. He has good speed and features some mix-ups. He's just an odd duck. While Zack may be a joke character narratively, he's far from a competitive way. Zack has more than enough tools to be considered a solid character in his own right. Swing mix-ups, excellent high-low strings, and a scary throw reset game, just to name a few. Basically, players using Zack will do so if they want to troll their friends. One way they could fix Zack is give him more launchers and some juggles. A set of mechanics that the DOA series loves. Basically, Zack's only going to see play with the oddballs and those who want to troll their friends. And even tournament players. Tamaki was introduced in Dead or Alive Extreme Venus Vacation. She did make an appearance as DLC in DOA 6. She seemed to be a relatively popular character from what I saw during my online experiences with Dead or Alive 6. I can't come on how she plays and what level of play she is best suited for. She makes the list simply because she seemed popular. Popular as Tamaki may be, it's unlikely she'll make the base roster for two reasons. One, Dead or Alive Extreme Venus Vacation is not canon it takes place in a separate universe. Two, due to the game being co-developed by DMM Games, the characters made exclusively for this game are their property, despite being designed by Team Ninja. So this is a situation similar to the Street Fighter EX series, where Capcom didn't own the rights to the characters exclusive to that one. And to further prove this is the case, when you purchase Tamaki in Dead 6, she's classified as a licensed third-party character, similar to Mai and Kula. Rather than the normal DLC character, you can play in limited modes like training mode and quest mode, with Rachel, Omiji, Miltengu, and Phase 4. At the very least though, Tamaki could be a returning guest DLC character. Leon has been around the franchise for a very long time, first introduced in 1999's Dead or Alive 2, basically making him more or less a mainstay. Leon is a grappler. If you know my playstyle in fighting games, I am not a fan of this archetype, generally speaking. But Leon has some interesting lore. Leon fights in honor of his dead lover, Lauren. There's more to that storyline, but I feel that might be a better topic to explore in a separate video. Ha! <laughs> what a coincidence. Leon is the next character I'm covering in the Dead or Alive War Explained series. Neo Tengu is a female Tengu who was introduced in Dead or Alive 5 and played a major role in the story of 6. A major role? No. No, she didn't. All she did was troll a handful of people. Minus Hayabusa who wasn't having that shit. If anything, the writers in Dead 6 wanted to give us a look into her character and how much of a contrast she is from the predecessor Bunkatsubo, the original Tengu and the main antagonist of Dead or Alive 2. Unlike him, who only cared for the suffering of humans, Neil Tengu was fascinated by a human so much that she played a part in social experiments just to humor herself. Her role was minor at best and inconsequential at worst. Hitomi is basically the best character for beginners to start with, at least in 5. I can't say for DOA 3 or 4, as I haven't played those games sadly, having never owned an Xbox or Xbox 360. In 5, Hitomi had the tools to remain competitive at all levels, even if she was a less than ideal choice some of the time. In Dead or Alive 6, however, the changes in the system basically made her a next to useless character. That's an exaggeration. Hitomi isn't top tier, sure, but she definitely isn't useless either. If anything, she's middle of the road. You have to work a little harder here than you did in 5, but not by much. It also helps that with a simplified stun system, she has more guaranteed follow-ups in specific situations. My Shiranui is so popular in the SNK and King of Fighters community, there's literally the hashtag, no my, no 
As much of an inspiration as Mai was in part for the Dead or Alive series, this is one too many times she's made a guest appearance in the series at this point. Two is pushing it enough. Let the old maid retire. So, I know we said we'd have between 26 and 28 contestants on the base roster. We managed that. Barely. It was getting hard at the end to find characters to add without being too guest heavy, and I wanted to avoid adding Bayman because, honestly, I don't think the poor guy has any hope of making a Dead or Alive roster right now because of the current political situation. If you're talking about what I think you're talking about, the smartest thing for Koei Tecmo to do is simply cease distribution of the game to that particular country. Having everyone else suffer the loss of an iconic character in the video game series because of political situations like this is asking for a repeat of the PR disaster in Dead or Alive 6. As an aside, I doubt Bandai Namco would remove Dragunov and Tekken 8's roster over this. At this point, it's hard to consider other characters from Teen Ninja properties. So, this section of the roster is going to be guest character heavy. It's also going to feature a lot of SNK characters because it seems like Team Ninja and SNK have a good working relationship at the moment. And so many KOF characters just work perfectly in the Dead or Alive setting. We're aiming for 12 characters worth of DLC. Rachel! Hold it! I should point out that Rachel was also in the base roster of Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate and Dead or Alive 5 Last Round alongside Momiji. And not a lot of people took kindly to her being resold as DLC in the following sequel. So why allow Team Ninja to double down on something so disingenuous? It makes no sense. And even if they don't have a part in the main story, and that's a big if, that didn't stop characters like Leon and Pine from being playable anyway in every other mode of the game. But most importantly, Rachel and Momiji are not third-party licensed characters, so they have no excuse at this point for being base roster shoe ends. Vanessa is one of the more beloved characters in all of fighting games. Part of the reason is because she's one of the few mature women in the genre. Seriously, look at fighting games in general, not just the Dead or Alive series. Most of them are perky high schoolers or perky early 20-somethings. That's not a bad thing, that's just the norm. Because of Vanessa being a more mature character, she will of course appeal to a more mature audience or the younger audience who are into older ladies. So why am I including Vanessa as the first DLC guest character? It's because she's one of my favorites from KOF and I think she suits the Dead or Alive franchise incredibly well. She would also have some fun interactions with Mila because of the boxing background versus MMA background. Vanessa could work, if you could differentiate her from Mila. B. Jenny is such a fun character in general. She's a happy-go-lucky pirate lady who's a mix of kind and bratty. Her climax move is her beating her opponent senseless with her shoe. And honestly, that's hilarious. Looks why she also could blend right in with the women of the Dead or Alive franchise and not look out of place. Another reason she gets included is because she was insanely popular in Gauro Mark of the Wolves and is a fan favorite of SNK nerds the world over. I could also see Barn Jen at work to an extent. I'm indifferent to the rest of the guest character choices though. I would have personally preferred Leanne Neville from KOF Maximum Impact, Kagemaru and Wolf Hawkfield from Virtual Fighter, and Kana from Dare Live Extreme Venus Vacation. Anything more would be overkill, and juggling around expiry dates for collaboration rights would be a pain in the ass. We don't want a case like Dead Alive 5 Last Round, where Mai and certain third-party costumes are gone forever after a certain date. I also believe the addition of a scrap Dead Alive 1 character to the base roster, a traditional Muay Thai martial artist named Kelly, would be a nice easter egg to hardcore fans who know about the development history of that game. I also believe that your idea of a female judo character is superb. If my video comes off as being harsh or too critical, then I'm very sorry. I actually enjoyed the video, and I'm glad you're helping bring more awareness to Dare or Alive. But at the same time, I had to address some misinformation on the video where I could, and I don't think a wall of context comment on the video would have done it enough justice. That being said, keep doing what you're doing, and stay encouraged. I'm Osmic, and I'll see you next video.